Okay, so right now it's about that time of year where we have to deal with updating the iOS version in software development. So basically that means that iOS has a new, another version and as a result that affects the uh, Xcode and all the other development software that we're using to uh, develop our enterprise level product. So let's talk about this. All right, so what my development team encountered dealing with Xcode, okay? First of all, one thing we're gonna, we're gonna deal with is compatibility issues, right? That's the main thing. Give me a second. Uh, the first and foremost issue in is compatibility. The existing code base might not be fully compatible with the new iOS version or the latest code. This could lead to errors, crashes, which will require debugging and code modification. Um, the deprecation of APIs, which each new iOS version, uh, Apple often deprecates some of the older APIs and introduces new ones. If, you're, uh, if your project is using deprecated APIs, you'll need to replace them with new ones, which can be time consuming. And um, yeah. Uh, new iOS versions often come with UI UX updates. These changes might affect layout and design of your app, requiring you to update your app's UI to ensure it aligns with new standards and guidelines. Okay. So, I mean, so what this means is basically, um, you know, with, um, with new versions comes different things as far as laying out, especially if you use UI kit or storyboard, right? But um, there have been changes with uh, how views work since the uh, inception of Swift UI. So you gotta be very mindful of that. Um, new features and capabilities, and I'm gonna touch on that later iOS 16 introduces new features and capabilities that your app could benefit from. Um, let's move on to the next. Uh, testing with new iOS version, you'll need to conduct thorough testing to ensure that your app works correctly. Blah, 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 I think this is a given. Um, Xcode issues um, with Apple's integrated development environment. You also get updated along with iOS. New Xcode versions have their own set of issues. Yes. So Xcode, a lot of times when there is an iOS upgrade, there are bugs, right? Um, there are bugs with the way um, the preview works and Swift UI sometimes. Um, just different bugs. And I don't want to get all into that um, right now, but you'll see that over time. And you might need to learn new workflows and tools within Xcode, which has happened to me. It's a whole nother video. Swift and Objective-C updates. Yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. We, we're gonna touch on that. Um, with new iOS version, Apple might update its App Store review guidelines. Developers need to ensure that apps comply with the latest guidelines to avoid rejection during the review process. And I've seen this happen a couple of times, right? Um, a lot of times you have to, I know in the past, you, you I know that I've had to have the um, terms of use. There was a time when the terms of use wasn't so strict when you submitted uh, apps to the app store. Now you have, you have your terms of use, your, um, you have to adhere to their, um, uh, guidelines with regard to a privacy policy if you store information on your app. Um, there are a lot of things, right? So you get, just have to pay attention to because over time, their review guidelines change. Every new iOS version comes with a learning curve. Developers need to blah, 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 blah. And documentation changes, of course. Okay, will there be issues involving Maven, Azure, DevOps, GitHub, JFrog, Artifactory, and Cloud Governance? Okay, 
Maven, if your project uses Maven for dependency management, you might encounter issues if the new iOS version or Xcode update affects compatibility of your dependencies. Excuse me. You may need to update your dependencies to versions that are compatible with the new iOS version. Okay. If you're using Azure DevOps for your CI CD, you'll need to ensure that your pipelines are compatible with the new iOS version and the latest Xcode. This might involve updating your build scripts, unit tests, and deployment processes. There might also be issues with the hosted Mac OS agent if they don't support the latest Xcode version immediately after release. So yes, and and um, I, I think I'm probably gonna have to get more in depth with this. Um, so I will later be doing videos on build scripts and uh, things to that effect. Yeah. If you're using GitHub Actions for your CI CD, similar to De Azure DevOps, you'll need to ensure your workflows are compatible with the new iOS version and Xcode. This might involve updating your build scripts and unit tests. Also, the Mac OS runners provided by GitHub might not immediately support the latest Xcode version. And so that's a drawback of using um, of using GitHub for that, right? Um, yeah. So um, think twice if you use GitHub Actions, right? JFrog Artifactory. If using JFrog Artifactory for managing your binaries, you might need to update your repositories to include any new dependencies required for the new iOS version. If there are any changes in the way Xcode handles dependencies, this could affect how you use Artifactory. Okay, cloud governance. With a new iOS version, there might be new features or changes that affect how your app interacts with cloud services. This could have implications for cloud governance, including security, compliance, and cost management. You will need to review these changes and update your governance policies accordingly. Integrated issues. The integration between these tools might be affected by the new iOS version or Xcode updates. For example, you might be, you might, there might be changes how Xcode reports, bill results, or whatever, which could affect how these results are displayed in Azure DevOps or GitHub. Version control, if the project's version control is managed through GitHub, developers will need to be careful about managing branches or merging code. With the significant changes that can come with new iOS version, it's crucial to ensure that code changes are properly tracked and merged. So what is the best sequence of steps when updating your iOS version to 16? Okay, let's talk about this. First one, we will say update your Xcode. First, you need to update Xcode to the latest version that supports OS, iOS 16. You can download the latest Xcode version from your Mac App Store, boom, 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 gotcha. Okay, next, you're gonna update your project settings. Okay, open your project in the new Xcode version, update your project settings. Um, maybe I'll make a video about this separately, right? This includes setting your iOS deployment target to iOS 16. And then you're gonna update your dependencies, right? If your project uses any third-party libraries, you need to ensure that they are compatible with iOS 16, right? Uh, when I say, when we talk about third-party libraries, we're talking about stuff that you might, um, third-party libraries that you might access using um, um, what was, was, was it called? The uh, Cocoa Pods or um, the um, I know Xcode has their own management. I can't remember. 
Oh my god, I can't I can't believe that I can't remember the name of it. Hold on. Yes, a Swift package manager. That's what I meant to say. That's the third party that manages our third party library, Swift package manager and Cocoa Pods. Okay. Um refactor deprecated APIs, review iOS. 16 API changes and refactor any deprecated APIs that are in your code base. Test on iOS 16. Test your app thoroughly on all iOS 16 devices or simulated to ensure that everything works as expected. Right? Pay special attention to new or changed features in iOS 16 that might affect your app. Update your CI CD pipeline. If you use CI CD pipeline for your project, update it using the latest Xcode version and to run tests in an iOS 16 simulator. Okay. And then submit to App Store. Once you've tested your app and are satisfied that it works correctly, you can submit to App Store. Make sure to follow the latest App Store review guidelines. Okay. And let's talk about some of the new features that are coming in iOS 16. This is just a brief overview. I will be doing specific videos on these features. So you should follow me and watch all my videos, like and subscribe. So um, Swift UI, um, we're going to use they, they have bottom sheets now. Swift UI now supports bottom sheets, where which are uh, common UI elements in many other apps. Fixed grids. Swift UI now includes support for fixed grids, which can make layout design easier. Um, new navigation handling. Swift UI has introduced a new way to handle navigation. Replacing the old navigation view with two container views, navigation stack and navigation split view. I'm going to do videos on that real soon. Um, new modifiers. Swift UI has introduced new modifiers for creating shadows and shapes, both regular drop shadows and inner shadows. Um, the line limit modifier has been upgraded to handle ranges as well as simple integers. Some modifiers have been upgraded to support parameters so they can be adjusted at runtime. All right. Um, now we have new text field features, right? It's now possible to create new text fields that automatically grow with their content, optionally turning them into scrolling views when they pass the line limit. Oh, man, that's awesome. Uh, new toggle features. It's now possible to bind the toggle to an array of Booleans, which is helpful many for times when you want to enable or disable several values all at once. Animated text characters. We can animate all sorts of text characters just by using a plane with animation call, even in ways you might think impossible. Transferable protocols, a new feature. Swift UI for iOS 16 leans heavily on the new transferable protocol for sending data around your system. This is a newer, simpler, swiftier replacement for NS item provider. We're going to talk about that, and you'll see it used in the paste button, share link, drag and drop, and more. Okay. New navigation stack, navigation split view. I think I just talked about that a little while ago, right? Um, Swift data. This is a new framework that simplifies working with data in Swift UI. It provides a set of tools and APIs that make it easier to fetch, cache, update data in your Swift UI apps. Then there's TipKit. This is a new framework that provides a standard way to create tool tips in Swift UI. It allows you to easily add informative tool tips to your UI, UI elements, which can be very helpful for user onboarding and feature discovery. And discovery observation, this is a new feature in Swift UI that allows you to observe and react to changes in the environment. For example, you can use it to detect when a user has enabled dark mode and update your app's UI accordingly. Okay, and that's all that I have for now for upgrading to iOS 16, but I'm gonna cover some of these topics in depth with their own video. So you need to stay tuned. Like I said, like, subscribe, and on to the next.